Want to take my wife's job post-maternity leave? Get pushed out instead. Background. We live in a country that needs a lot of improvement on laws, their application and enforcement. We are a lot better than a few years back, but still sometimes people can get away with forging some types of documents, like medical records, education degrees, etc. Also, English is not our main language, so job titles, degrees and other details are translated to their best equivalents. According to our country's labor laws, all female employees are entitled to three months paid maternity leave. Employers, at their own expense, are expected to cover for the employees on maternity leave, usually with temp workers. Severance payments are mandatory when firing employees, without justified cause, crime, fraud, etc., with more than three months on their jobs. So that's the time limit to be considered a temp employee. Severance payment calculation is rather complicated, but for firing people employed four years or less, it usually boils down to about four months of salary. To fire pregnant women, employers have to pay them six months of salary on top of the severance payment they're entitled to. If an employee quits voluntarily, they effectively forfeit all benefits previously mentioned. My wife has been working for a nonprofit for 10 years now. I don't want to give out much detail, but the company deals with, among other things, basic women's health care, first care OBGYN, birth control, pregnancy tests, etc. The company has three locations within 10 or less miles from each other. I own a small tech support firm, and we've been offering services to this company for about the same time, hence my small involvement. We actually met through this professional relation. This is her second kid, my fourth and first baby girl. The main characters, my dear wife, the main role, temp bitch, dear wife's nemesis, Bane director of operations, my wife's boss, Administrative Director, Boss's Boss, also a woman, FWIW, onto the story. My wife is a very easygoing, introvert person. She can be shy when you first met her, and on first impression, she gives out a vibe of being a pushover. In reality, she takes no shit from anyone, including, or especially, me. She was hired as the company's receptionist originally, but thanks to her hard work, ethics, and professionalism, which I've witnessed myself even before dating her, she's being promoted constantly. Her apparent pushover personality has been a recurring theme on her job, since for years she worked as an office manager, in charge of overseeing the company's vehicles, managing the drivers, janitors, dealing with some external contractors, etc. Out of the receptionist desk, this is a small to medium company. Sometimes when a new manager was hired, they tried to make her run phone errands, set appointments, pay bills, etc., and other petty stuff, like serving coffee, etc. You usually have a low-level secretary director of operations, thinking she was only a receptionist. She promptly called for a staff meeting every time, having the director of operations set these assholes straight. She foresaw the company's need of having a human resources manager, so she talked me into help her, financially and with domestic duties, get a master's degree in human resources three years ago. She's a business major. I contributed to the cost and did my best to take care of the kids and the house when she was in class. She graduated with very good grades and the investment paid off. The position was created last year, following advice by external assessors, who promptly recommended the company to give my wife the job, with a significant pay raise involved. Yay. A few months later, we got pregnant again, so my wife and the director of operations hired this temp girl, temp bitch, to cover for my wife during her maternity leave. My wife was very weared out on her last days of pregnancy when she trained the temp bitch, and she also may have commented how relieved she would be without work stress for a few months while enjoying our baby girl. Temp bitch probably got my wife's pushover vibe as well. Temp bitch turned out to be an opportunistic, backstabbing skank that thought that she could take over my wife's position. She also turned out to be somewhat stupid. As a weird coincidence, my employees knew her. A few months prior, she was employed as a consumer electronic sales girl on other company that uses our services, and they knew she was not in fact a human resources, business major as she claimed to be. She was a marketing major fresh out of university. At the time, my wife let it slide, didn't alert the company, as she was after all a temp employee, and expose her will mean my wife would have to either scramble to vet and train another candidate in less than a week, or reschedule her C-section for a week later. While my wife was on leave, some of her co-workers started alerting her in private 
that the temp bitch was starting to get more and more comfortable into my wife's position. Among other things, overriding some of the directives and procedures my wife had put in place, trying to implement her, often inadequate wrong, own. Giving employees advice and directions that directly contradicted my wife's instructions, giving hell to some of the suppliers the company and my wife have been satisfactorily dealing with for years, Temp bitch had the audacity to change the email footer on my wife's computer, as well as wording on the emails themselves, to appear as she was the official HR manager, not my wife. She was specifically told that she had to let everyone know she was acting on behalf of the actual HR manager. She did this on specific emails to certain employees and suppliers, changing it back when she emailed or copied the bosses. I know, this sounds very stupid as she was leaving written evidence that easily proved she was misleading people. Some of these emails were forwarded in private to my wife by her co-workers. This bitch is a class a sweet talker, so she convinced the bosses to let her stick around for another month after my wife returned to work, to organize and help finish up some procedural handbooks my wife started writing, but were actually the director of operations' responsibility. Her contract was renewed for another month so she could perform this very specific task. As this boundary was not defined in writing, she started to overstep it in every way she could. 1. Sign herself up on a training course on the company's dime. 2. Setting up on-site training courses for the staff, already quoted and kicked off by my wife with the external providers before her maternity leave, to take credit for the coordination effort, leaving, however, loose ends. My wife decided to pick up the slack, as letting it slide would have affected both the employees and the training providers. 3. Telling my wife in several instances, in front of other employees, that she needed to stay after hours to finish up certain tasks pertaining to her position as a way to mark territory established dominance. 4. Questioning my wife's decision, again in front of other employees, about scheduling meetings within tight schedules, as well as her ability to keep up with them. A 5. Published a before and after manifest, detailing all the improvements she supposedly made to the HR managing position, contrasting her tenure against my wife's. 6. Treating representatives of various supplier companies unjustifiably like dirt, in a twisted sick way to assert dominance maybe? A particularly nasty phone call was overheard by the administrative director. 7. Several similar instances of these six examples. Here's where my wife got fed up and she started her pro-revenge. From each of the above instances, these actions were taken. Please match the numbers. 1. My wife contacted the training company to let them know that an error was made with the trainee's name, which should be the company's HR manager. So my wife set the training course for herself, as she was entitled to, being, you know, the actual HR manager, and deferred it for a latter date. She let her bosses know, but not temp bitch who showed up for the nighttime course only to find out she was not allowed to take it. 2. As my wife had way more time interacting with the on-site training provider, on the first day of the training week, the trainers came in looking for my wife to help them set up everything. On the last day's wrap-up meeting, they commended her for all her effort taken to make the training week a success. Temp bitch left the room in a huff. 3 and 4. My wife replying to temp bitch right then and there, on each occasion, that she was in no way taking her precious family time to work after hours, and that she had enough ability to get done all tasks and meetings within her normal working hours, and then do exactly that on some days even with time to spare. My wife had a private meeting with the director of operations to talk mainly about the before and after manifesto, as well as everything else mentioned above. My wife's point of view was that the company should not have allowed all this to happen. Unless, of course, they intended to fire my wife and keep temp bitch as HR manager. The director of operations apologized profusely to my wife, assuring her that this was not the case at all, and told her that the administrative director, after overhearing temp bitch's nasty phone call, decided she didn't wanted her to be part of the company in any way, shape or form, and commissioned Director of Operations to take care of it. The Director of Operations called Temp Bitch to a private meeting on a Friday, during which she informed her that her services were no longer needed. The Director of Operations relied she was aware Temp Bitch was past the three-month mark, so she was entitled to some severance compensation. Temp Bitch asked to be able to respond to this the next Monday. On Monday, Temp Bitch presented Director of Operations with a positive pregnancy test.
Yes, you read that right. And told Director of Operations they now had to negotiate, citing the six-month salary compensation law for dismissing pregnant employees. Tempich expressed that she saw no need for her to be fired, and she very much preferred to remain on the company as an employee. The Director of Operations told Tempich that she needed to get back on her about this and scheduled a meeting for a few days later. The Director of Operations met with Administrative Director, who reiterated she felt Tempich should not be part of the company, so the Director of Operations turned to my wife to start the dismissal and compensation procedures. Here's where my my wife's revenge gets really pro. With the help of my co-workers, my wife got more detail about Tempbitch previous employment and marketing major background, which allowed her to get publicly available info from a job search application website about Tempbitch, which constituted irrefutable proof she falsified her credentials to get hired by the company in the first place. My wife didn't even bother to tell me about this at the time, as at the moment, I was in the middle of a very stressful work trip made a dossier of printed out emails on which Tempbitch was making herself known as the HR manager to lower level employees, suppliers and contractors. She was told when hired that she had to clear up to all suppliers, both verbally and in writing. She was acting on behalf of the HR manager, my wife. My wife met with the director of operations and presented her with all this evidence. My wife said that it took a great effort to pry director of operations's jaw off the floor. My wife stressed that it was in the company's best interest that Tempbitch should be required to retake the pregnancy test within the company's healthcare facility. As I'm sure you already guessed, tests came back negative, with no evidence of a recent miscarriage. The director of operations purposely scheduled Tempbitch's meeting on the same day my wife had to meet with company's employees on one of the other locations, basically to avoid any uncomfortable situations. But she was told later that temp bitch somehow managed it to keep it together until she was showed the door. As it is part of her duties, my wife knows for a fact that a resignation letter signed by temp bitch is on file with the company and that no monetary compensation whatsoever was paid to temp bitch.